You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. It's gotta be said, but Borderlands 2 has some hard bosses. Some of the bosses are just hard to be hard, and in some cases, some of the bosses drop such awful weapons that they aren't even worth killing. When was the last time anyone seriously took the time to kill Master Gi? Or when was the last time you killed Verastus? I don't know about you, but killing Verastus once was plenty for me. Yeah, Verastus does drop some good stuff, but he's even fairly difficult to kill with Salvador and some of the best weapons in the game. Before we get any farther into this particular video, I'm mostly picking choices here on a couple different factors. Uh, part of it is the boss's difficulty, however having lousy items to farm for puts you even on a higher spot on this list. It's already pretty bad that you have to kill a really hard enemy in the first place. It's even worse that you get lousy shit for doing it. But enough about me. Top 10 worst, hardest, most frustrating, most shitty bosses in Borderlands 2 starting now. Number 10, Dukino's Mom. Okay, so the Dukino's Mom you're seeing here is sort of a pushover. She's not too powerful and you also get other enemies in the arena where you fight her. And these other enemies are useful for drawing aggro, which will allow you to focus all of your efforts on dealing damage to Dukino's mom. The Dukino's mom that is fairly difficult is the Dukino's mom that's located in the Digistruct Peak add-on. Typically, you end up fighting her along with several other Skag type enemies, and this can be pretty difficult because not only are you dealing with other enemies, but you also have to contend with Dukino's mom's attacks. The beam attack sucks, and the ground pound can wreck your shield on higher level difficulties. What I would recommend you do is try to keep her at a distance, or if you have either Axon's turret, Gage's death trap, or Zero's decoy, you can use that to keep her distracted so you can attack or maintain your distance. Unlike some of the bosses later on in this list, killing the Dukino's mom that appears in Lynchwood allows you to obtain the Mongol. This rocket launcher is good, however it works best at significant range and if fired while airborne. As I've said in some previous videos, the Mongol is much better in the pre-sequel because it's easier to keep enemies at a significant range. The Dukino's mom in Digistruck Peak has a larger loot pool, and I've seen her drop Hellfires before, which is both cool and kind of weird at the same time. Regardless, Dukino's mom is no pushover. Number 9, Badasaurus Rex. This boss just sucks. That said, you will see from the gameplay that Batasaurus Rex can be quite easy on Salvador, provided you've got an Unkempt Herald and a Grog Nozzle. At the same time, Batasaurus Rex can be quite difficult on most other characters. After all, everything is pretty easy if you can heal from all of the damage dealt with your weapons. This boss fight is difficult because Batasaurus has a decent amount of health and much of the robot's body will reflect bullets back at the player to deal damage. Not to mention that Badass Asaurus has a bunch of homing attacks, as well as a fire area of effect attack that can quickly down you, even if you're playing Salvador and you're wielding the Grog Nozzle and the Unkempt Herald. Generally, what you're supposed to do is shoot at Badass Asaurus' wheels, as that's the safest way to deal damage without fear of your own bullets being deflected back at you. You may also want to hide behind the barrier that you encounter when you first enter the arena. That way you can avoid most of the attacks. As far as weapon drops go, it's worth killing Badass Asaurus Rex for the slow hand shotgun. This can prove to be a really nice weapon for Krieg players. It's worth killing this thing for the slow hand, but Badass Asaurus Rex is a pain and I hate fighting him with Axton. Number 8, Saturn. I've always thought that Saturn would probably make a really intimidating raid boss for Borderlands 2. While certain characters and builds can easily take out Saturn with the right combination of weapons, Saturn is usually pretty hard, both when you fight him during the story as well as during Digistruct Peak. This is because Saturn has no critical hit points, he is partially immune to slag, and has significant splash damage resistance. While you can't slag Saturn itself, you can slag the turrets, which makes things a bit easier. Saturn also has laser blasts that deal area of effect damage, as well as homing missiles which can destroy your shield and health bar. 
You're also at a disadvantage because the area where you fight Saturn is very open and your only real source of cover is the truck stop with the red chest. Typically, I've found that weapons like the Flacker or the Conference Call work really well against Saturn. This is because Saturn is large enough to where all of the projectiles will hit. So I would say in general, weapons that are good up against larger enemies are also going to be good up against Saturn. At the same time, weapons that deal damage primarily through splash are going to have a problem. Characters like Axton that benefit from grenade bonus won't be able to use most of their primary weapons against Saturn because he is so resistant. Otherwise, Saturn's drops are okay, the Hive is kind of nice, the Invader is okay, but I think you're better off with a sniper from another manufacturer. Number 7, Jackenstein. So Jackenstein is the final story boss from the Sir Hammerlock's Big Game Hunt DLC for Borderlands 2. Jackenstein isn't as difficult as some of Borderlands 2's raid bosses, but this boss fight can really suck and in my personal opinion, farming Jackenstein takes a really long time to do and isn't totally worth it. In order to defeat him, you will need to shoot the electrical canisters on his back, and depending on your weapons, it can actually be really difficult to hit these, and you'll find that some of your best equipment, like the Sandhawk or the Interfacer, aren't as effective against Jack and Stein because the projectiles just don't travel fast enough. Plus, these electrical canisters have a decent amount of health, which can make using weaker weapons risky. After you destroy both canisters, you'll have to shoot Jack and Stein in his face. Now, at first glance, this doesn't sound that difficult. However, the problem is that Jack and Stein's body will deflect bullets, and they can hurt you if you aren't careful. This is made worse by the fact that Jack and Stein already moves relatively fast. I also don't like Jack and Stein because he drops the yellow jacket. While it's an okay weapon, you'll find that you may need better weapons to kill Jack and Stein in the first place. It's also lame that you can't refarm the Hyperion Armory here either. It would have been cool if Gearbox allowed us to do that, but it is what it is. Number 6, Terramorphous. I know you Salvador players out there are going to kill Terramorphous pretty easily. However, I think when it comes to most other characters in Borderlands 2, Terramorphous solo is pretty difficult. Now, is Terra as frustrating or as difficult as some of the other raid bosses that will appear later on in this list? No, but is he more difficult than the Son of Cromorax or Pyro Pete? Definitely. The problem with Terra is that it can be difficult to hit his crit spot, and when you first start fighting him, it's possible that you'll get flung off the map a lot because his attacks can really knock you around. He also has this fire form that he takes if you don't kill him really quickly, where he gets a significant amount of damage reduction. And for most characters, you will need to kill Terra before he uses his black hole or singularity attack that pulls you towards him. While I know Axton can dodge this with his failing shield ability, I don't think even a full bore grog nozzle wielding Salvador can withstand the vortex. Depending on how far you are in the game, killing Terramorphous is either worth it or not. The Slayer of Terramorphous class mod is a guaranteed drop, however Terramorphous also drops the Pitchfork as well as the Hide of Terramorphous Roid Shield, and the Hide of Terramorphous Roid Shield alone is definitely worth killing Terramorphous for, especially if you are a melee character. There are some other uniques like the Teeth of Terramorphous or the Breath of Terramorphous, but really, the height of Terramorphous is what you want. Number 5, Hyperius. Just like Terramorphous, of the 9 or so raid bosses in Borderlands 2, I would say that Hyperius is on the easier side depending on your character or build. If you're skilled, Zero's boar skill can make short work of Hyperius and is capable of dealing ridiculous amounts of damage. When compared to Terramorphous, Hyperius is just more difficult to damage because normally you have to have all four of his loader companions in a recovery state. Otherwise, Hyperius will have his shield and he will be very difficult if not impossible to damage. The key to killing Hyperius is when his shield is down. Maybe if you can kill three of the four loaders, you will only have to worry about one of them providing Hyperius with his shield. However, I don't recommend you kill all four of the loaders as Hyperius will change his tactics and will constantly nova and run towards you and kill you pretty quickly. While you can still kill him in this enraged state or form, it is much, much harder. While Hyperius is challenging, he is worth farming for his unique gear. Just like all of the other Seraph bosses, 
Hyperius does drop Seraph Crystals and drops some good weapons like the Tatler SMG. He also drops some other shit too in the form of the Retro Splat Gun. The evolution is okay, but you may be better off with a different type of shield. Um, Hyperius also is a viable source for getting some of the legendaries in the game like the Northfleet and the Shredifier. If you don't want to go to the trouble of killing Vermivorous for a Northfleet, farming Hyperius is worth your time. Like Terra, Hyperius is hard, but he is worth farming. Number 4. The Dragons of Destruction This is another raid boss that's really easy with Salvador, but is fairly hard for everyone else. The worst dragon of the four is easily Helianth because it can restore its own health as well as the health of the other dragons. So it's probably in your best interest to try and kill him first. Otherwise you risk getting killed by a dragon gangbang. Not something you want listed as your cause of death. After that, you're probably going to want to kill Boost because he increases the level of the other dragons by making them stronger. Then maybe Incinerator because of his stupid floor tile attack and he can reflect bullets back at you. Um, I'd say you'd want to leave Brood for last because he can spawn Basilisk enemies which are useful for getting second wins if you go down. It can be really stressful sometimes to get these guys to land and when they all are constantly attacking you, it can be difficult to manage your shield and health bar. I would still say these guys are definitely worth farming. The Stinger Pistol is pretty nice on either Salvador or Gage as an alternative to the Infinity. The blockade is also pretty decent as it provides some damage reduction. However, I think the best weapon you can get here is the Omen Shotgun, which is not only a really good shotgun for conventional combat, but it's also the best shotgun to perform TDO reloads with. Like Terra and Hyperius, these guys are hard, but the struggle is certainly worth the effort. Number 3. Veracitus Veracitus is easily one of the most difficult and frustrating raid bosses in Borderlands 2. Not only does Veracitus have an insane amount of health, but he also has a massive shield and becomes extremely aggressive after you've depleted it, or after you've killed Chief Nagawatu. In general, you'll need a trespasser to kill Chief Nagawatu so that he doesn't give Veracitus his massive shield. You also need the interfacer which unfortunately is acquired from Veracitus. While you can kill Verastus with the other characters, I strongly recommend Salvador if you want to have the easiest time. Even with Salvador, fighting Verastus can be really difficult. The key here is to kill Chief Nguatu with the Trespasser before Verastus receives his shield. If Verastus does get the shield, you really should start over. Assuming you were able to kill Nogawatu, it's a matter of some luck and trying to properly time when you should be shooting Verastus. You also need to be wary of the corrosive effect Verastus can apply. This alone is usually what kills me when I try to fight him. Assuming you are actually able to kill Verastus, I say the potential rewards are worth it. Verastus can drop either the Interfacer Shotgun or Lead Storm Assault Rifle, which are both really great guns. While Verastus was a shitty joke from the developers, he is still worth killing for his good loot. Number 2. Master Gi Guys, fuck Master Gi. This is a raid boss that I absolutely hate the shit out of. While I think this boss fight is creative from a design standpoint, there is a reason why people don't regularly farm Master Gi. Unlike Hyperius, who can be taken out relatively quickly with the right build and character, Master Gi will take at least 5 minutes to kill each time you do it. Plus if you want to do it without the gate exploit, it's going to take longer. The goal of this boss fight is to avoid Master Gi's attacks, and when toxic sandworms pop out of the ground, you want to quickly kill them and have Master Gi walk over the corrosive puddle that they leave behind. The problem is, is that if Master Gi doesn't walk over the puddle, it will dissipate and become permanent, making the fight that much harder. If you fail to pull this off enough times, the corrosive puddles will eventually end up killing you. I also think Master Gi isn't really worth farming either. He drops the Patriot, the Ahab, and the Devastator. While the Ahab is useful for the Flak or Ahab glitch, the Patriot is sort of a wonky sniper rifle that is sort of difficult to use, and the Devastator is just a horrible gun. I guess you get Seraph Crystals for doing this, but you're much better off farming Hyperius if you need to fight a raid boss. 
Plus, Hyperius has better drops in general. Master Gi, he sucks. He's a waste of time. No one is going to disown you if you skip this shitty boss. And finally, number one, Dexiduous. What a boatload of ice! This boss is virtually pointless to farm. While Verastus is extremely difficult, you at least get the chance of getting a really nice Seraph weapon in the form of both the Interfacer or the Let's Storm. Upon killing Dexiduous, you only get the Chopper Assault Rifle, which is a piece of shit gun. Dexiduous is also the most expensive raid boss to fight in the game. You will need 99 Iridium in order to even fight him. Plus, you have to go to the trouble of activating four beacons across the entire Hunter's Grotto area. This map is huge, and all of the beacons are located on opposite sides of the map. Once you light the beacons, you go to the center of the map, throw a switch, and then you have to fight even more enemies. Once you kill them, then you can fight Dexiduous. Dexiduous takes virtually no damage and has shit tons of health. The only way to hurt him is to shoot his critical hit spots. Crit spots that are already difficult to hit with some of your best weapons like the Sandhawk and the Interfacer because of the distancing and the projectile speed. Killing this piece of shit is a waste of time. You don't get anything that's really useful for killing Dexiduous. Unlike all of the other DLC raid bosses in the game, you don't even get Seraph Crystals. Fuck Dexiduous, save your sanity, and save your Iridium. Alright guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, and as always, take care and I'll see you all next time.